Good morning, Oklahoma. Welcome to Cow Calf Corner. This week's topic is selection to improve cow efficiency. And if you join us weekly, you know that we've talked a lot here in the past couple months about some standard measures we can take on our cow herd at the time we wean. And one of those is to look at what our cows are weighing and consider that along with the weaning weights of calves, how many of our cows are pregnant, and eventually look at something like what percentage of our cows mature weight are they actually weaning off. And when we think about reproductive traits, and, and we know they're very economically important in a commercial cow-calf operation that sells calves at weaning, but the underlying genetic component of reproductive efficiency generally falls into that category of being pretty low inheritability. Now when we say it's low inheritability, it means it's largely influenced by the environment, and the good news story for us there is that nutrition is a big part of environment, so if we can balance the amount of cows we're running to our forage that we're producing and, and have that in check, it's how we can make sure a lot of our cows are actually getting bred and weaning off a calf every year. But we look at something today, or possibly from a genetic or selection standpoint, more of what we could select for that's actually a moderately heritable trait, and that would be mature cow size. Uh, one of the big advantages we have with modern genetic prediction, and thinking about EPD values we get in all of our beef breeds, since EPDs are comparable against geography and time, let's say that when we weighed up our cow herd this fall at weaning, we realized our cows were weighing a little more than what we expected. We're dealing with some excessive mature cow size. If we go back and check out those registration papers and actually look at the genetic values for mature weight on the bull or bulls we have been using, regardless of the age of those bulls, and, and most beef breeds at this point have got some sort of a sire search or pedigree lookup tool that can be used online, so we can look those bulls up by registration number. But if we take a look at the mature weight EPDs of the bulls we have been using, it helps us plan for the future relative to our breeding or selection program in identifying some bulls that we might buy, use through AI, or turn out in the future that have got a little less mature weight. Uh, as we've discussed on the past on Cow-Calf Corner, there's a lot of genetic values reported on beef cattle. Uh, each breeds look a little bit different, but one of the numbers you're going to find in a sire summary or in the EPD values of about any breed is a genetic value for mature weight. If we can select for a little less or try to keep mature weight in check while we continue to get the levels of calving ease, weaning weight, milk, and maternal performance that we want in that next set of bulls that we turn out, over time, in a trait that is generally about 35% heritable, we can actually do some good of genetic selection to improve potential for other things while trying to keep this mature weight down. The long-term consequence of that, we've got cows that wean off a higher percentage of body weight, probably take a little fewer groceries over time as we have them in production. So something handy we can put in our toolbox and consider the next time we select bulls. As we conclude our thoughts on that this week, at the time we tape this, I'm getting ready to head to Louisville, and I want to give a shout out to the 1981 and the 2010 National Champion OSU Livestock teams that will both be commemorated in Louisville this year to recognize those national championships. Uh, congratulations to that group of people. I look forward to making that trip. And as always, thank you all for joining us on Cow-Calf Corner.